In Jesus name we pray a divine father we are making request that this period we are entering into special evangelism in holiness revival movement worldwide we shall witness the salvation of men women children and the youths and our brothers our sisters shall be part of them our parents our neighbors shall be part of them in jesus name god let your children know your word to sponsor this work you have given unto us let your children know that this is the most important thing they should spend their resources on to promote the kingdom of god among men thank you jesus for answering our prayers in jesus name we pray yes our study in the book of daniel shall continue but today we are making a digression to take this topic supporting christ's gospel and true preachers with your tithes and offering supporting Christ's gospel and true preachers with your tithes and offering. It's a trust that I trust shall reach you soonest. And I trust the Lord will open your eyes to the need of supporting the gospel, being faithful in your finances and material resources toward God. In the book of Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to verse 12 Malachi chapter 3 verse 8 to 12 Will a man rob God? Yet Ye have robbed me, but ye say, Wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. Ye are cursed with a curse, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. Seeth the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to suffer it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes and he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground. Neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field. See it, the Lord of hosts and all nations shall call you blessed or blessed for ye shall be a delightsome land said the lord of hosts at the time the lord was speaking these two things were suffering two things were suffering one or do i call two sides were suffering one the sight of god the temple workers in the temple the priests of god who were serving the people before god the levites that were walking in the temple and walking among the people wherever they were in the things of God, they were suffering. And the other side that was suffering was the people, the nation. The nation was also suffering. 
now the suffering of the side of god or of the of the workers in the house of god was that there was no tie no offering and so the people were starving in fact some of them abandoned the work and went to look for their food so that area too was suffering and over there among the people suffering was there too what were their sufferings let's name them he said the windows of heaven were closed against them the windows of heaven were closed against them there was no blessing coming from god upon them they were laboring they labored much but gained little they labored much but gained little again the devourers were devouring them destroying the fruits of their grounds there were pests insects and other things destroying their crop they suffered drought they suffered many things yes and they notice also that the vine cast their fruit before the time in the field so they were not enjoying the vines there was premature delivery among the animals and so the young ones were not able to multiply among the children of israel something was going on among them something was going on this beautiful land that people praised because of god did not receive the praises anymore the recognition that other nations gave them was seizing many things came on them unawares to them they didn't know what was the cause of their situation verse 8 gives it the suffering that was going on in the house of god the suffering going on among the people what was the cause verse 8 gives it will a man rob god ye have robbed me but ye say wherein have we robbed thee in tithes and offerings they were stealing from god they were robbers so they were suffering for their sin of robbery Be, being robbers they were affecting the house of god the work of god the workers of god being robbers they were also suffering the curse of their sins they were suffering many things from the curse of their sins this tells you you suffer many things because you don't pay tithes you suffer many things unaware because these people are not aware they say, ah, which way are we robbing God? They were not aware. You may not be aware, but you are suffering nonetheless because you are not paying your tithes. And because you don't pay tithes, you make the work of God to suffer. You make the workers of God to suffer. You make the church of God to suffer. So, you are the cause of the sufferings because 
there is no enough money, no enough resources to do the service of God, to maintain the servants of God. So, both sides are suffering. You are suffering. That's what the, the word of God is making us to know. Tides. What is tide? Tide is one ten, one over ten of your earnings. If you end up to ten, ten, tide is one of it. If you end up to a hundred, tide is ten out of it. If you end up to a thousand, tithe is one hundred out of it. The government of a nation devises ways to generate funds for the administration and well-being of the citizens. Some of these ways include income tax and custom duties. Hence, faithful citizens contribute financially in one way or the other to the government strangers who come to live in the country contribute financially in one way or the other to the government this is natural businessmen pay tax various people civil servants tax as source is deducted this is done and is known and people cooperate to it. Those who refuse to cooperate are called tax def defaulters. And that is uh, a crime against the government. Similarly, God has ordained ways in which those that worship him can contribute materially and financially to the activities of the gospel. And the administration of the assembly of his people. When God blesses you and prospers the work of your hand, it is expected that you will naturally want to show appreciation to him. The first thing you are to do is to give him one tenth of that which you have realized. One tenth. That's the first thing you should do. When God has blessed you, one tenth of it, and it's a general practice among men, every person that wants to prove faithfulness to God does it. Yes, every person that wants to show that I am faithful to God will do it. Look at it in the book of Genesis, chapter 28. Genesis chapter 28. I read from verse 16. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep. And he said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I knew it not. And he was afraid. And said, How dreadful is this place. This is none other but the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel. But the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on so that I come again to my father's house in peace. Then shall the Lord be my God. Let's read verse 22. One, two, go. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house. Yes, and of all that thou shalt give me, 
I will surely give the tenth unto thee. Can you see? It's a practice that had been before the law. So payment of tithe did not stop at the law. It is a practice that was not enacted by Moses. It had been the practice of natural men upon the earth that had the fear of God in them. Right long, we could not tell when this began. So, and it continues to this day. See, a promise here. Now, how could you make a promise like this and not fulfill it? How could God bless you and you don't pay tax? It is like tax. A tenth of your offering is demanded by the Creator that moves with you in life, gives you grace in life, gives you work to do in life, opens doors for you in life, gives you strength in life so that you can do this and do this and earn resources is this is his own tax on you a tenth of it yes as the government imposes tax on all workers so god the creator of man has ordained that every man or woman who generates income should give one tenth of it to the Lord. One tenth of tithe of all earnings are holy and must not be used by the person who earns it automatically. When you collect salary, 15,000, 30,000, or you did a particular job and earned a hundred thousand or one million. The cause of God is upon one tenth of it. You see, God, it is moving on the one tenth as the spirit moved upon the waters. This is God's portion. This is God's portion. This is God's portion. To use it up is to use up God's portion. No reason can be given. In as much as you cannot give a reason to kill yourself. Similarly, don't give a reason to take the tithe of God. Don't. In as much as you cannot give reason why you defecate in the house of God a holy place you don't also give reason why you should defy the money of god that is in your heart why you will not pay one tenth of that which god brought into your hand it is his own automatically whether you know it or you don't know it. It is automatically goes on. It's better you know it. So that you don't come to cry tomorrow. Because you see here, the people didn't know. Wherein have we robbed God? In which way did we steal? There are people in hellfire now. That I say, how did I heal my ear? How did I steal? You stole God's portion. As for them, they died in ignorance. My people perish for lack of knowledge. But for you, with all your eyes open, you have been eating this, the tithe of God and giving complaint. Remember, the people gave complaint. What was their complaint? Check it out. Or rather, I should say, the people were suffering what was their suffering their work was cursed their fruit were, were shed off because they could not mature they could not get ripening they were shed off 
they suffered many things the enemies have right into the the crop their farm their their animals they didn't know that they remain under such abject poverty because they were not paying tithes so it is not because you're too poor that's why you're using your tithes no the use of tithe is what kept you that in that condition the reason why you are that the way you are is because you use up both tithes not that you are too poor to pay tithes no you are not paying tithes kept you down in poverty that is what he's saying it's god's demand a tax you are to pay a tax you are to pay yes tithes are to be paid on all kinds of earnings such as salary wages fruits of economic trees farm produce animal produce monetary interest on investment gains made in business dividends all that comes into your heart you are to pay tithes out of it all earnings that come into your heart you are to pay tithes out of it do we pay tithes also out of gifts that somebody saw you and said take this as a gift well that's not the instruction of scripture because children can be given gifts gifts can take various form material or monetary so the commandment is not on gifts but on the endings of your life that which you labeled and received that which you did and god blessed it and this is the gain out of it this is the interest you got out of the investment tithes are to be paid on that but whoever decides on his own i will even pay tithes on the gifts because the money i have received is reasonable fine you're free you're doing it not by commandment but by your love for god of course you could give even beyond tithes for service from what you have received as gift as you are moved to do so yes now we go on tithes belong to god and not to man tithes belong to god and not to a church not to a church denomination not to a christian group of fellowship not all that claim to serve god are actually doing so know that you are responsible to god you are responsible to god and you are paying your tithes to god tithes belong to god and not to an individual not to a body not to a denominational church or even a non-denominational but christian body tithes belong to god why am i emphasizing this because somebody might give his himself the name of a pastor a minister and say pay your tithes to me and he may not be a child of god he may not be a man of god you'll be wasting the resources of god again we said not all that claim to serve god are actually doing so a church you might be in a church for any reason and the church might not be given to god in righteousness and holiness you will not be giving them money 
No. It is God's money. I tell you more. Not all preachers are true and faithful. Not all churches do the will of God. Ungodly churches and preachers cannot use your tithes to promote the gospel of Christ. If you give them tithes, they are ungodly people. They will abuse the money of God. You will, they will abuse it. You have given holy things to dogs. Tithe is holy. You now give it to dogs. And the Bible says, don't give that which is holy to dogs. And again, if you give tithes to people who are not worthy for it, you have cast your peer, very beautiful thing, that you honor the name of the Lord. That should exalt the name of the Lord. You have cast it to the swine. They will trample upon it under feet. The beauty of it will disappear. And in fact, they will turn again and fight you. So, take note of this scripture. Pay your tithes to where it will be used to honor God. Promote his righteousness and holiness. And win true converts to him. That is why you should pray your tithes. Your tithes is an investment. He said, prove me now with and see. Hear with and see. It's an investment. Bring it into the storehouse. Into my house. Is it everywhere that is God's house? Is it every church that is God's church? Is it every denomination that is God's people? Is it my house? My storehouse? Where I am? Where the money will be used to honor me? In fact, where I direct the use of the money. I direct the use of the money. Bring your tithes there. It is then I will bless you. It's when your tithes go into servicing me. It's when your tithes go into doing work to give glory to me. That I will bless you. You can invest into any bank. It is when the bank makes profit that you get a dividend. It is when that business makes profit. That you can also have a gain. What if the business does not make profit? You lose. You lose. So if you take your tithe to where they are not serving God, they, they are not following God, they are not spending it in the ways of God, you lose. But more in Christ's own case, you don't only lose, you suffer judgment because you have encouraged sinners to sin more. You have encouraged sinners to do more wickedness. You have encouraged corrupt ministers to have enough money to co commit more immorality. Yes, you have encouraged them to promote themselves more and do more wickedly. So it is a matter that you take very seriously because the money is not yours. It's God's money. Let the Holy Spirit lead you to the right place to pay your tithes. Don't be restricted to your denomination or fellowship group. Don't be restricted that uh, I am a member of this so I must pay my tithes here. No. Except you don't have understanding. If you are looking for the prosperity of God, if you are looking for progress in Christ, progress of the people of God, you will invest that money in the right place. Many people carry much money and waste them where the money is not required. And God doesn't get it. It's just like 
you send money to someone you are happy you have sent him money then you met him and said the money i sent the other period the other time did you receive it he said no i'm not aware come you said what i say he said, i didn't receive the money come that money i sent by career service didn't reach you no it didn't reach me no wonder i didn't receive thank you from you i have been expecting thank you i said at least i felt that you should say you appreciate but i didn't hear that i was wondering why are you so unthankful so is that the money didn't come that is the same thing with paying tithes in the wrong place the money doesn't reach god so you should not expect thank you from him you should not expect thank you you should not expect reward from god offering is that which we give willingly and happily to god whenever we come to worship him in the church it is one of the ways of giving glory to him it is part of worship as we pray sing praise hear the word of god and receive his blessings we should also give offering of material things and money to him offering should be given willingly joyfully and in appreciation for his worthiness and goodness it must also be given in holiness is part of worship part of worship yes some people abuse it by collecting so many offerings in one service to the point that people are murmuring they are exploiting the people and so the people get used to them the people get used to them they know that as they are going to church they will be given five offering so they take their money and divide it into small five portions small five portions so that all when you say come and give they have something to come and give they have something to come and give add up all they have given it doesn't go anywhere they have to, you train them because it's no more a noble exercise it's no more an honorable exercise it is now exploitation and the parole have said since the hunters have learned to shoot without missing i will fly without patching let's know who will get who so the congregations now have adjusted themselves and the glory of the lord is not in the thing anymore so but normally offering is part of service as you're joyful in singing joyful in praising joyful in rehearing the word joyful in prayer receiving from god be joyful also in giving your offering in the house of god offering is give different from tithes because while tithes is one tenth of that which you have earned as salary or wages offering comes from what remains what you can take from what remains to give out for the name of the lord from time to time that is offering sometimes the gospel work may be so demanding that the money the church realizes from tithes and offering may be grossly insufficient the Lord expects members to give willingly, bountifully, and sacrificially for this. Money may be, may be required for construction projects or evangelistic outreaches. 
the church members should willingly contribute for this. Where labor is required, the people should turn up to render their service to the Lord. There's much blessing in giving for the gospel. Even your service, be available to do it. As a member of the church, be available to do for God anything you can do. Please, I advise you, don't demand for high pay when you come to work for your God. Show a difference. Don't cheat the house of God when you come to work for your God. It is the work of your father. Don't cheat. Don't overcharge. Church with fear that I am doing this thing for myself. I am going to be blessed also in this thing that I am doing. While the church must give you something because you have to eat with your parents, with your children, but make sure you show a sign, enough for people to know this is a home business. I'm doing it for my father. I'm part of this. I am part of this. Very important. Praise the Lord. A brother was selling some wares to me and he said, I will sell to you different from the price I sell in the market. That's his choice. If he had charged me the price in the market, I will buy. But on his own, when he said so, I noticed the fear of God. I appreciated that. It's the love of God. Yes, and that is what a mature Christian should do. I don't mean you should not make gains at all. You need something too because your business must increase, must continue. But you must show a difference between the work you are doing in the house of God and that which you are doing outside there. Because you are doing for yourself. You're doing for your father. Who will bless you? Because you have left a good report for your brethren to see how much you love your God. So, learn how to give to support the cause of Christ. The gospel of Jesus. Learn how to give. I want you to note something. I believe that nobody seated here is loaded with pledges and vows because of the projects we carry out in holiness revival movement. Why so? It's because God has helped us to have people that understand that as much as God God has given you release much also to sponsor the work. Because not all have. Not all have. So, as a result, people have been releasing to help in the work of the gospel. In that case, we don't label you to your heart. So give us for this. Give us for this. Yet, we ask you to give. Because giving is part of Christianity. That's why we're teaching you this. Learn to give on your own. Don't wait to be coerced. Learn to give of your own, on your own. Don't learn to be forced. This is evangelism time. We expect you to give, to support this work on your own. Don't wait to be forced. We may not force you. And it will come against you because you are not supporting your father's business. You're not doing it. You want to be forced. Donkeys want to be beaten, slapped, and kicked before they move. Yes. Before they move. Don't wait for that. That we should kick you. We should push you. We are too sanctified to be doing that on you. We are too holy to be doing that on you. 
we speak to you give if you're not ready stay you will lack the reward of god pay your tithes give your tithes we have not given you card tithe card to see to be marking you we allow you to practice faithfulness to your god because we have taught you the world we have brought the word down to your conscience we have made things plain and the bible says understanding shall keep thee discretion shall preserve thee the understanding we have communicated to you should drive you forward in christ in the works of righteousness in the house of god you should move forward you should know what to do to him that knoweth what to do and does not do it, to him it is sin. You know what to do. What are you waiting for? You expect God to be talking, talking, talking. God should appear to you in dream. God should send a prophet to you and say you didn't pay your tithe. Then you stand up and say, ah, God has sent to me. God will not do that. He knows whom to do that to, but not to you. Because you have known. You have known clearly what are you waiting for stand up and do it there are people that will carry tithes and go and give to the orphanage that's not where god says you should take his tithes to to my house to my store house the orphanage is not the house of god the orphanage is not the store house why are you taking god's holy money there why and no i need to support them good support them give to the poor but give from what remains after you have removed the tithe you can give to the orphanage what remains after you have given your tithe then give to the orphanage some will say oh i saw that boy that person there in trouble so i gave him my tithe that's not what the lord is saying that's not righteousness you have done you refuse to do righteousness no wonder these people leave the word of God and keep their own tradition. That's a, your own commandment, not the commandment of God. The tithes, one tenth of your offering, should be brought to the house of God and not to be given to the poor on the street. House of God. As for giving to the poor and the needy from that's offering, from what remains after you have removed your tithe then you can give that to the poor on the street and it will be your righteousness before god so this is what the lord wants you to know do not support false ministers ministries and churches do not support false ministers ministries and churches do not support false ministers ministries and churches the bible tells us in second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to 15 second corinthians chapter 11 verse 13 to 15 the word of God says, For such are, are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel for satan himself is transformed into an angel of lie it's not a matter you should marvel about for satan himself is transformed into an angel of light therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works you get it 
Here the scripture tells us there are false apostles, false prophets, false pastors, false evangelists, false teachers that are also called the ministers of God. If they call on ministers to assemble, you will see diverse kinds of people appearing, portraying themselves as ministers. Yes, false people. These ones are looking for money to spread their deceit and death among humanity they are false what they spread is deceit lies but you know he if he wants to go to lagos he has to take maybe plane to go to lagos to go and spread lies there and he needs money he needs money and can come to you and say, I'm a minister. I need money to, the Lord has sent me to Lagos. I have a program there. What program? Lying program. I'm going to take some lies in Lagos and I need transport. You get it now. I'm going to do some destruction in Lagos. And I need transport. I'm going by flight because I'll be ministering today. And I need transport. I need money. I am a man of God. But false ones. False prophets. That will come to you. The Lord has sent me to you. And gives you. The Bible is full of positive words and promises. Opens the Lord sent me to you and gave me your name. And said this is what I should tell you. And so, after he finished, he said, you can bless man of God. Man of God wants to go. I want to carry out this business. The Lord has sent me to somebody in Cameroon. I have to go there. Quick, I, I need some money. So please, bless man of God. I'm telling you. And in the name of the Lord. I told you of somebody that is a prophet, is a man of God. Call someone else and say, The Lord said you'll be paying my, my rent this year. Ah, the Lord sent me to you. Wonderful, the person was excited. Maybe he has committed some sins. And when he heard that the Lord sent somebody to him to look for money, which means God is at peace with me then. Wonderful, I will pay, I will pay. So, he gave him the money. By April, as he, by April or so, he had forgotten that he, it was that man that paid the rent. He needed money again. He was looking for somebody again to catch. Since he forgot that he caught this one, he called him again and said, Yeah, the Lord sent me to you. What for this time? To pay my rent for the year. But I paid. You met me. Oh, is that so? You will waste the money of God on false prophets. Sponsoring evil men. And the money in your hand is holy. The money in your possession is God's money. What will you now say to God? What will you tell God you did with his money? What will you say? It's a holy money. And here are false prophets. They are looking for money to spread their deceits and dead among humanity. The Bible speaks of them as false ministers. Destitute of the truth of Christ. They don't have the truth of Christ. 
They are deceitful workers. <laughs> Somebody came to me. I said, the Lord sent him to me. I behave very gentle, very humble. And I said, oh, the Lord sent you to me. Come, All right, I sit down. What did the Lord say? He opened his Bible. The Lord said this, the Lord said this. I was listening quietly and peacefully. No, I must be careful before God too. So I wouldn't be thinking that I am higher than anybody. No. Every member of the body has its own function. I must respect its own function. Let's see whether this is original. That when he spoke, I perceived who he was. Then I asked, what's your name? My name is Prophet Apostle. I said, that's where the problem is. <laughs> your name is Prophet Apostle. What are you gathering those names for? Those titles? <laughs> that is what they do. That is how they live. You will pick them. And when he finished, he said, um, uh, in fact, I want to, uh, I have a problem, I want to, actually I want to go and bury my father. I said, talk to the secretary there. Talk to the secretary. I was on my way. And the, the secretary came. He said, when your father, ask him, when did your father die? Two years ago. Uh, what happened that you want to go and bury him properly? Uh, you have not built the grave. I'm telling you, you will be wasting resources of God. I'm be thinking that somebody is of God. Prove all things. Believe not all spirits, but test the spirit. Otherwise, you will give account for the money of God you're wasting on wrong people. Yes. They are deceitful ministers. Who glory in their ability to make people believe their lies. They will tell you things and make you believe and rejoice. I know how to make them believe. I know how. And some are pastors of our congregations. They know how to make people believe. They can invite people to raise money and give those people information concerning some people among in his congregation and the man comes and begins to speak and call you by name and who you are you say hey, god knows me this man god gave him uh, god gave him in fact god has given him a message for me the man is ah, the man has not been in this church but he know he called me by name arrangement just to exploit god's money well you find yourself in the wrong place so it's so far it so that you can leave the place. So, they are deceitful ministers. They are ministers of Satan, appointed by him, and sent to distort the gospel of Christ, and damn the souls of men. They camouflage as ministers who preach righteousness. They and their followers shall end up in destruction. Yes, they camouflage as ministers that preach righteousness. They will cut scriptures. They will do this. Is it not airing that you think that if somebody removes is now a holy person, he will, they will ask their members to remove earrings because to help their business better. Yet, they are not children of God. God doesn't know them. They are evil people. To damn the souls of men. Check them very well. You will catch them in their craftiness. If the Lord be, is with you. So. We are saying. Many people. Pay tight to them. And promote their service. And give them international ministry. So that they can do harm. In various nations. They go from place to place. Place to place, spreading nothing but debt over the people of God. Don't sponsor them. Don't sponsor them. Don't give them your offering. Yes. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 18 and 19. Philippians chapter 3, 
verse 18 and 19. Let me start from verse 17. Brethren, be followers together of me, and mark them which walk, so as ye have asked for an example. For many walk of whom I've told you often, and now tell you, even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Whose end is destruction? Whose God is their belly? And whose glory is in their shame? Who mind earthly things? For many war of whom I have told you, and I'm even telling you, crying, weeping, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. They are enemies. In their churches, they bury people in the altar. They hang some demonic substances around the church to give a sense of power. They acquire some, some things to promote themselves, promote miracles. They are not for God. No righteousness is there. None can be saved. None is saved. But they give them brass instead of gold and make the people content that they are serving God. They make the people feel satisfied. They shout. They dance. Tell them stories. They know how to use human psychology on people. They learn it. Many walk in the ministry as preachers, as teachers, as pastors of whom I have told you and I'm even telling you now I'm crying. I've seen them. There are very many enemies of the cross of Christ enemies of the cross of Christ the cross is for salvation but they are not for salvation the want of them their end is destruction the goal they are talking about is their belly hey my shoes this my shoe uh, we are asking somebody to go for evangelism he said wait I know when I will go for evangelism. At that time, the suit I will be putting on, I will be putting on how many thousands of, thousand uh, worth of suit. The shoes, thousand worth of, the, of, of shoes. So that when I stand before the sinner, they will know that I'm not an ordinary man. Ah. That is themselves. They, co they are costly. Very costly. Brother, for heaven don't waste God's money on them don't these ministers are soliciting for funds for their work in the televisions in crusades and churches they want tithes and offering to be paid to their churches and ministries they have great programs and projects they want to raise funds to execute these great programs and projects, but not for heaven, not for God. Money of God is wasted. Money that would have brought people to salvation, uh, it, the people give the money to support Satan, to damn human souls. In the name of is my denomination. Is my choice preacher. Is my oh somebody introduced him to me. Oh, no, the man says I will he will uh, he will pray prayer that I will my money will be multiplied into into many times as much. And by just that, they waste money on them. Yes, don't support them to support these ministers. With your money puts you at war against Jesus. Jesus is walking and they're destroying it. <laughs> One of them became a member of holiness movement and a minister. Or in among us, we didn't know. 
and truly we we sent him here and there anywhere he went he must get a lady to go to hotel with him anywhere send him to anywhere a lady must be there it's a mystery coming for coordinators meeting in the camp you put lady in a hotel in Guagualada here nobody was reporting was he so technical and shrewd but it's one of our serious ministers you no know, human beings are terrible it was God that revealed him you know God can be patient he will want your cup to be full God can be patient it was God that made revelation I will tell you about some of your coordinators we were in India we went for mission to India it was there the Lord was telling me this I came back hey he gave me the name of the person I tried to go the other way to see whether I would cause repentance in his life he real preaching real preaching and i did all the heart is sealed up to today as he repented even as we, we we got him out as he repented over there business continues what about those that were giving him money just to in, to promote immorality it's unfortunate complete deceit unholy thing in a holy place unholy thing in a holy place if they can camouflage like this in a holy environment do you know how they do who are alone over there in the name of their ministry do you know how they do how they live some clearly tell you that they're not for holiness and you're giving them money no be careful how you use your money be careful to give this type of people money is to be at war against jesus to be at war against the salvation of souls of men to be at war against the establishment of Christ's church on his truth, righteousness, and holiness. I'm telling you. It means you're fighting the gospel. You're fighting Jesus. That's why you're promoting these ones. So study people well. Study churches well. Study individuals well. Before you give money. To support them who is that person community that easily support a politician without studying the prospects of that politician will he win because your purpose is to that when, when you support him he would do something to bless your community will he win you don't study a person you just go for that person you will waste your money more than that you will seek you will procure enmity for yourself because the other person will say ah, you people rejected me i will never consider your community jesus will be say oh you rejected me you rejected my righteousness you rejected my truth my true preachers you rejected them i will not bother about you you won't have my life because you supported the wrong people yes learn this they are building projects crusade project programs conferences and traveling around the world must never receive financial support of righteous children of god they have an enough of their kind to support them. Your money is holy. They have enough of their kind to support them. But you don't support them. Don't support their building. 
Don't support their traveling around the world. Don't. Don't support their projects. Demonic projects. Satanic projects. Projects for initiation. Stop supporting them. If not, you will be doomed with them in hell. Second John chapter 1 verse 10. Second John chapter 1 verse 10. The Bible says, If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, Receive him not into your house, neither beat him God's speed. Verse 11. For he that beateth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. If there comes somebody to you and is not on holiness, not on the fear of God, not preachers of righteousness, and is asking you for money, don't, so, don't say it's your relation. Satan can send your relation to get you best for hell. Don't even greet him. That bless him. No. He that blesses him and says, oh, let it be well with you, shall is partaker of his evil deeds. You are the one encouraging such wicked people. God will count you as one. God will count you as one. Thieves were going to rob and they came to your house to sleep there for, so that by 12 a.m. they will leave. You say, okay, go to the other room and sleep there. Are you not one of them? That's what the word of God is telling you. In 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 2. 2 Chronicles Chapter 19, verse 2. And Jehu, let me read from verse 1. Verse 1 and 2. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Han Hanani, the, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly? And love them that hate the Lord. Therefore is wrought upon thee from before the Lord. Shouldest thou love the ungodly. And help, help people that hate God. God is angry with you. Be careful. Not to support people that hate God. I say I am showing him love. Are you loving enemies of God? Will you love enemies of God? Pay tithes to them? Strengthen them? Send material gifts to them? In the name of ministry, but they are destroyers. Destroyers. Destroyers in the house of God. Support true ministers, ministries, and churches. Support true ministers ministries and churches who are these true ministers look at paul speaking in first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 first thessalonians chapter 2 verse 10 he said ye are witnesses and god also how holily and justly and unblameably we behaved ourselves among you that believe. You are witnesses. You have been seeing it. You that are among us, you have been hearing it. How holily, justly, and unblameably we behaved among you that believe. That's true ministers. True ministers. Knew everybody knew that Jesus was righteous. Although some said he had Beelzebub. 
They gave evil report of him. The man is a madman, and you people are not hearing madman. They say, never a madman speaks like this man. The Holy Ghost has borne witness about him that he is true. You know how we live our lives. Despite the accusation of unbelievers, of backsliding ones, and of demons. That which Apostle Paul said about himself and about the ministers that walk with him is a good description of true gospel preachers. They have been saved from sin by the mercy of God through faith on the Lord Jesus Christ. They have been given the Christian ministry according to the grace and calling of God. A particular minister spoke to us so many years ago in Uwere. He said, Every minister is called, but it depends on who called him. I am a called minister. Yes, you are called, but who called you? Human beings can call. In fact, they are the fastest to call. Have they have not been calling you. They call. Denominations can call. And say, yes, go and, do, go and represent our denomination. Go and do this. Satan can also call for such a false apostles, deceitful workers, ministers of Satan. Satan can also call. Your desire can call. And God calls. So when you say you are a called minister, it depends on who calls you. So they are called, but who called them? They will work for the person that called them. What if they are not called for God by God? They can't work for God. But these ones are called by God. They are working for God. Who called them? Yes. They are working. For God. Who called them to Christian ministry? They are zealous and able ministers of the gospel. They ensure that sin and evil do not cleave to them in their work with God and service for him. They do not use human wisdom or craftiness in the ministry. They are not pursuing personal gains or ambitions. They are not liars or deceivers what they preach and teach is the word of god and not human philosophy the truth they teach is verifiable from the holy bible these are to know true people there are very few in the world very few in the world those who see them acknowledge that they are righteous, holy and true. God sees into their heart and approves them through signs and wonders in the name of Jesus. They produce genuine and abiding fruits of Christian service. You will see them laboring and genuine fruit of service are being produced by them. Who are they? They are chosen by God. John chapter 15, verse 16. John chapter 15, verse 16. Ye have not chosen me, but I have chosen you, and ordained you, that ye should go and bring forth fruit, and that your fruit should remain. That whatsoever ye shall ask of the Father in my name, he may give it to you. It's not you who chose me, but I chose you. Support the man God has chosen. Support the ministers God has chosen. Support the ministries God has raised up. Support them. 
God chose them and ordained them to bring forth fruit, abiding fruit. Support them. Stand by them. These are the ministers you are to support. Whatever you give to them is truly given to the Lord. These are they who have the mandate to evangelize the world, plant churches, and teach the believers the whole counsel of God. Partner with them through your money and material resources. Pray for them as you support them materially that the work of God may prosper in their hands. Please do not allow any one of them to be starved because he is not of your denomination. No, I am of this. No, I cannot use my money for this. We have our people. We have our project. You are ignorant. You are ignorant. It's a servant of God. You have proved to be so. And God is one. If he comes across you to assist him and you know him, do it. You are doing it for God. To strengthen his hand. For the work of one God, soul winning, and establishment of righteousness upon the earth. Be sure, denomination should not restrict your money. Don't be threatened by any pastor concerning the money of God in your hand. It's God's money, not his own. He is not the one that will render curse upon you. It is God himself. The curse will come if you pay tithes in the wrong place. The money didn't reach God. He will still give you the same thing that I have not seen your money. You have not paid. He said, but I give this person to come and give you. He didn't. No, the person didn't bring it. I gave you money to go and pay for myself. What has happened? Oh, sorry. Actually, what happened is that I used your money. That's what the person is telling you. He said, you use your money. It didn't reach where it's supposed to go. So, what is the Lord saying? Support those who are true. Support them. In Matthew chapter 10 verse 40. Matthew chapter 10 verse 40. The Bible tells us saying He that receiveth you receiveth me. And he that received me, received him that sent me. That is it. He that receives you, true preacher, true minister, that supports you, true preacher, true minister, is supporting me. And by supporting me, he is supporting the father that sent me. Invest in the right place. So not among tongues. Invest in the right place. Pay tithes in the right place. Where your money will promote the gospel of Jesus. When faithful and true ministers of Christ are supported by true and faithful givers of material and monetary resources, the result will be world revival and establishment of Christ's church in readiness for his return. When we bring two people together, faithful and true ministers of the gospel, and faithful and true supporters of the gospel, when these ones come together, there's going to be explosion. Great revival. There's going to be great revival. Because money answered all things. Money are required to print the books, produce the DVDs, send, send them across nations, to send preachers to various places, to send out missionaries. Where the true gospel can go to people, money is required to pay for the TV stations. 
Money is required to speak through the radio and pay. Money is required. Yes. To speak through the satellite on one ourselves to cause this gospel to move. This gospel of truth. Liars have taken over the internet or taken over the, 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 the satellite, the televisions because their supporters are giving them money but righteous people don't know how to give money. How to pay tithes to the right to the house of God. So we have money to establish his kingdom. Get people from satanic harm. Let the message of truth also fly as all these false cities are flying in the TV. Let message of truth move. Let the books of truth move. All these books in hotels that are for dest destroying human souls and they put them there in the name of Christian books. Get the true books and let's spread them. Get them. Let them spread in hotels and in banks, in hospitals and in everywhere. Let's do something. Are you a child of God? Release your money. Pay tithes. Give offering. Contribute. This is evangelism time. We need your money. We want to walk. We want to walk. The Holy Spirit has signified that rise up and do something. I have called you for this purpose. It could be the Lord is already at hand. The God that called us and made us last day's army. End time army. He must be just at the door. And so he's staring us. Move quickly. Move. And we want to move. Are you ready to move? Are you ready to move? Send in your money. Send in your money. Be faithful to your time. And lose the hands of God upon your life for more blessing and more supply. Let God go into a contract of giving and receiving between you and Him by your faithfulness. And let's see, we are ready as ministers of the gospel that possess the truth, that know the truth, that have the passion for souls, and that have that want to make the church ready for Jesus' return. For the rapture, we are ready to move. We need money to do this job. We need money to do this job. Your money will come in. I say your money will come in. God will move you to do it. God will move you. God will move you. Be a fruitful vine. Yes. Be a fruitful branch. Yes. Be a fruitful Christian. Give your money for Jesus. Rise up upon your feet and dedicate yourself and say, Lord, the little I get, I must give tithes and offering to support this gospel. This wall must be supported. This track is an extract from the book Truth, Holiness, and Rewards in Christian Giving by Pastor Paul Rica. Get the book. Read the whole of it. And get motivated to do things of eternal reward. Hallelujah. Worship you, Lord. Yes, support the work of God. Support the cause of Christ. Support Him. Support Him. Your poverty is because you have not been given enough. It's not because you don't have, that's why you don't give. No! It's because you don't give, that's why you're poor. You don't give, that is why you're poor. Not that you're poor, and that's you're not giving. No! Give! Then you're breaking, some, you're breaking some forces against your life. I'll open the windows of heaven for you. I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes. Thank you, my father. Thank you, my God. Thank you, my Lord. Let your people give and we are ready to multiply the gospel. Spread it. We'll fly. We'll fly. Throughout this, all through this country. We'll fly to outside countries. Worship you, Lord. 
Thank you. Your brother will be safe now. Your sister will be safe. Your parents will be safe now. Your neighbors will be safe. As you go with the Lord, spreading out his word. The children will be safe now. The youths too will be safe. Your brothers will be safe now. Your sisters will be safe. Your parents will be safe now. Your neighbors will be safe. As you go with the Lord, spreading out his word. The children will be saved now. The youths too will be saved. Your brothers will be saved now. Your sisters will be saved. Your parents will be saved now. Your neighbors will be saved. As you go with the Lord, spreading out his word. The children will be saved now. The youths too will be saved. That is what is happening. As you go with the Lord, spreading out His word. Salvation for everyone. Salvation for everyone. The children will be saved. The youths will be saved. The women will be saved. The men will be saved. Thank you. Thank you. Supporting Christ's gospel and true preachers with your tithes and offerings. You have a commitment to make by telling God today, I have determined to ensure I don't fail in supporting true preachers, in supporting the ministers of God with my tithes wow. and offering. Tell God this is a responsibility. I have made it a responsibility. I will not waste my money on false and deceitful ministers and pastors. Those that are into falsehood. Those that are into deceit. Promise God I will not support the wicked ones with your money. Open my eyes to them that I will not be deceived by them. Tell God, Lord, I want to be receiving in abundance from you. And that has to depend on your giving too. Because you are receiving is a product of your giving. Tell God, give me the mind to give out and support this gospel so that the windows of heaven will open over my head. God has promised to reward the titus and it is dependent on your giving, your commitment and faithfulness to titan. Oh God, I have made up my mind to support the preachers, the true preachers with my tithes and offering so that this gospel will go further. We have also made a pledge and commitment to God to reach over 10 million people this year. This can best be done 
when we commit ourselves to supporting and sponsoring the gospel with our true money, with our money, with our resources, tell God, I have made up my mind to be a giver. I have made up my mind to support your true cause. Go ye into the world and preach the gospel to all creatures. Also in tells, spread this by giving your true resources, by giving your tithes and offering. Oh God, make me a tither. Make me a tither. Make me a giver. Cost me and let it be a responsibility I will not lay down. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you for your children. See their commitment. See their submission and readiness. Pledging, oh God, to support this work. Reward them, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Reward them in the name of Jesus. As they commit themselves to giving to you for the purpose of this gospel. Oh God, open their doors in Jesus' name. Open them up, oh God, to resources. Whatever their hands come upon to do, let there be blessing that they will not cease to give. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Although they have been restricted by forces contending with their resources because of the ignorance they went into. Oh God, forgive them in Jesus' name. Forgive them in Jesus' name. Lord God Almighty, teach them to give a right for the purpose of the spreading of the gospel in this end time, in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you for this word you have spoken to us. Lord God Almighty, let this your servant never fall short of words from you. Let his wisdom to communicate, his boldness to deliver these messages increase ever and ever in Jesus' name. Let this voice continue to communicate and cut across the world with the gospel of righteousness, truth and holiness. In Jesus' precious name we pray. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Amen. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non-denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816-902-3948 or 0805-683-4348. You can also reach us through our email address, holinessrevivalmovement at gmail.com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my Lord and Savior. I believe Oh, my Lord and Savior.
I believe you. 